it's Kim from Carolina Sewing Back. Thanks so much for joining me today. Our project today is a great um, little pumpkin and these sew up so quickly and easily. And I just wanna share this project with you today. We've been making them around our home for years and there are a lot of different variations, but this is just my favorite one. It can be easily done on your sewing machine or your serger, so please keep that in mind as we'll be putting our wedges together. It's something you could do on either one. But before we get started, let me tell you, as always, this is a free project for you at www.carolinasewingback.com. Just click on projects and there you'll be able to print off your own template that will have your wedges, okay? And you're gonna need six of those. And also two different style leaf patterns will also be there. I've got this leaf for you and this style leaf right here. So you can do these in so many different fabrics. I've seen people recycle sweaters using this. Um, denim is so cute. Checks are so popular now and plaids. Um, anything you want to do wool but today I've just used um, just some solid some moda marbles in my projects and I went out in the yard and clipped a little bit and found a little stump for it and then you can decorate also with um, raffia or burlap or this one's just got cute ribbons added to it from the Kimberbell ribbons and I hope you'll enjoy this so before you get started you'll need about a half a yard of fabric for your pumpkin wedges Okay, so about half a yard, and then you just need a small square of fabric, two pieces for your leaves. So I just pulled some scraps out of um, my stash. So this is how we get started. We'll take your wedge, and you'll make a copy of that and cut it out, and then you'll need to cut from that pattern six wedge pieces. And these right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and run gathering stitches on our sewing machine today. So if you have never done gathering before, it is so simple and easy to do. Now, if you have a serger that does gathering for you, then you can actually just serge down using your differential feed and you can get both sides surged and they'll gather for you. I'm gonna run it on the sewing machine today. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take and pull my bobbin thread up from the bottom, okay? as if we were on a, a old manual machine. And that way I've got threads hanging out that I can pull, okay? So that's gonna be very important. My needle is simply set in the center needle position, is fine, and I'm gonna use the edge of my foot as a guide. And then I'm gonna take my stitch length and I'm gonna take that out as long as my machine will go. I think mine will go out to a six. Mine goes to a five, so that's perfectly fine for me. Now, sometimes when we're gathering and we're doing it for garments or little girl dresses and things like that, we run two rows of gathering stitches. And you can certainly do that on this. It helps control the fabric a little bit, but it's just a quick, easy little craft project. So I'm only gonna run one row of gathering stitches. So go ahead and I've got my stitch length set as long as it'll go. Mine's on a 5.0 and remember my needle's in the center position and you'll go ahead and begin stitching. And I'm just using the edge of my foot as a guide. And what I like to do to make this kind of quick is I'll bring my needle in the upright position and I'll lift my foot and pull so that there's a new thread tail for me back there. And then go ahead and run down the other side for me. And again, you're gonna raise that needle. I'm just gonna pull that out and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that wedge. So we've got one completely done and go ahead and start my next. I've got some extra threads here from somewhere, but I think they're, they're okay. Doesn't matter if you're stitching from the right or wrong side, it's still gonna just gather the same exact way no matter where you are. Remember when you come down to the bottom, raise your needle and go ahead and pull out and drop it right back in. Needle up, pull your stitches out and go ahead and cut and move right on to your second wedge.
And I am definitely starting so that my foot and my needle dive into the fabric and I'm stopping a little bit shy of the end also. So when I gather and for this project today, you do not need to stitch all the way to the edge of your fabric. When you stop, you just need to come about a half an inch from the edge and when you get ready to start, that's the same thing we're gonna do. Leave us about a half an inch on there. Maybe even an inch, okay? Now once you've got all six of your wedges completely done, what you're gonna do then is you'll begin to gather these by simply pulling. You have to choose, I'm gonna pull my top threads or my bottom threads. You don't wanna pull both because it won't gather for you. So normally what I do is I just, um, I'll pull my top threads and this is what I do. I just pull them both at the same time and go ahead and pull. And see how nicely that gathers for you? And then I'm just gonna stretch that gather out. And you honestly can, you can gather this as much as you want or leave as much as you want. They're gonna be cute either way. So, but you wanna spread these out fairly evenly. Okay, so that's what I like to do. Let me measure this real quick. This is how I like to see mine. And so once your gathering is done and you've pulled everything, that measures about eight inches from tip to tip, okay? And one thing I want you to notice is I have um, not gathered all the way up to the edge of my fabric on either end. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to leave, little spots like that so that you don't gather all the way up to the end. I'll explain why to you in just a moment. So go ahead and take your other wedges and let's pull those threads. And gather the next one. And I usually go ahead and do all my gathers all at once and then I'll get ready to sew everything together, okay? So go ahead and make sure that you Pull your gathering threads on all your wedges and prepare them for sewing. Now the way we're gonna prepare them for sewing is we wanna just carefully get these threads right out of the way and then we're gonna put right sides together. And this is how I pin to make sure that I don't, um, you're gonna to wanna to start on one end, you're gonna to wanna to sew all the way from the edge in, okay? So on that one, I pin like this so that I can remember that my stitch needs to come all the way from the end and move forward. And then on the opposite end, when we get ready to stop stitching, that end needs to look like, we're gonna come away from that edge about a half an inch, okay? And put our pin in this way. And this is gonna remind us to stop here. And then I go ahead and just fluff these evenly. And you can take as much time as you want with this. I don't usually take a whole, whole lot of time. If you're not careful though, and you don't keep these nice and even, then what will happen is when you get ready to stitch them together, sometimes they'll pleat and fold back on themselves. And you don't want that to happen because then your pumpkin won't come out nice and smooth on all your gathers. So we just wanna evenly stretch those out as best we can. This is a great project to do with kids. Even if they can't do the whole thing from beginning to end, there are some parts that they can definitely participate in. And it gives you a nice opportunity to teach them how to gather and also for yourself maybe. It's a great project. Now this time we're gonna stitch these together. So I need to take my stitch length um, from five down to a regular stitch. So normally when you're doing your regular sewing, a stitch comes in at about a 2.5. When I stitch my pumpkin wedges together, I like to put my stitch length on two. I, I take that down a bit just because it'll take a shorter step and it creates less of a pleat or a pucker when I'm putting all these gathers together. Now, when I stitch this wedge, I'm gonna go ahead and come in and I'm gonna remove that pin because you know I don't like you guys to sew over your pins. And we're gonna just go ahead and run our stitch. You don't have to worry too much about your gathering stitches um, because I normally remove mine before um, you get ready to stuff, you can remove them. They pull out very, very easily. 
So I'm gonna ride right across the rest of this wedge. Coming up on the finish now, and so what I want you to pay careful attention to is this is the one that's got my pin going in the side right here. So when I get to him, I know that what I wanna do is I wanna stay about an inch away from this edge, and then I'm gonna back tack, okay? And so you're gonna repeat all your wedges till they're all sewn together like this. So you'll go all the way around, and then you'll end up with a pumpkin that looks like this, see? So all your wedges are done, and you can see how nice my pleats came out, and I removed all my um, basting threads, and now I've got an opening in the top, because this is where you stood about an inch away from that edge, and so when we get all our wedges together, we have a nice circle opening right there, and I found that that just works better for me than leaving an opening in the side. Um, if you wanna do something different, you surely can, but at this point, We've got him turned inside out and we're gonna go ahead and stuff him completely. So let's take the time to do that. I'll put our little stuffing in here and it doesn't take long at all. What I don't wanna do is pull apart any stitches. So I just kinda of work it in like this. And these pumpkins, you don't wanna stuff them tight. You wanna stuff them pretty loose. You just don't need to be heavy and tight. It just looks, um, looks just as well when it's kinda of loose. I do like to work each wedge by itself though. So when I put my stuffing in, I push that to the outside of one wedge, see like that? And then I'll grab another handful and do the next wedge. So I've got this one stuffed nicely. I'm pleased with this and you can see this is what the bottom looks like. I've got everything stuffed just the way that I like for it to be. And like I said, you just put as much stuffing in there as you like. And now what we're gonna need is, um, I use a nice long hand needle for this, like, um, like a doll needle. And it looks like, and you're gonna wanna go ahead and um, thread that up with a double strand knotted on the end if you would. And what you're gonna do is, now we're just gonna do a little bit of hand sewing, and we're just gonna take that and feed it right in and out. It doesn't even have to be very pretty. We're just gonna draw up this center, and I wonder if I can give you a better look if I do like this. But we're just gonna draw this up. I don't like the hand sew at all, so my hand stitching is real sloppy, so if you're like me, this is a great project for you. And you're just gonna go all the way around with this long basting stitch. And the reason for that is now we can pull it nice and tight like this, and you can leave a little opening, just a tiny bit. I like to leave that opening in there, that way I can put the, um, the wood stump right down in mine for me like that, okay? Now, um, sometimes on some pumpkins, we'll do this and we go all the way down through and pull it up nice and tight and flat. So that's what that long needle is for because it'll really draw down through there and really pull it up tight for you. I do some little pencil toppers too and I've added that to our website as well. So you can see the little pumpkin pencil toppers on there and you can do those little pumpkins as well. So what I do now is I go ahead and tie this off and then I would sew my leaf and you're just gonna stitch your leaf just in a regular fashion. I took and traced my um, pattern right on my fabric and we're gonna stitch that just with a regular stitch and I leave an opening at one end. Now I think that the best thing to do for this is to um, use your regular stitch, 2.5 stitch length is just fine, but I do like to put a piece of warm and natural batting up under this, and it just gives the leaf a little bit of body. And so I apologize because I forgot to grab a piece of that, but you're gonna pretend that I had that. And what you would do is just place that warm and natural batting right underneath so that it's against the feed teeth. Now when I do come to a point like this on my tips, what I do is I take one stitch over, just like that, and then I come down, and I just find that I get a better pointed um, area when I turn. And now I'm coming to the end here, so I'm just gonna back tack a bit and cut that, and then you would go ahead and trim this and flip it. 
Now you can be as fancy as you want to with your leaves. Sometimes I like to go ahead once I turn mine and I press it, I'll stitch down the center of it. Maybe I stitch down it a couple of times to put veins in those leaves. Um, you can just do whatever you would like. But when you turn this, I want to show you that you'll use the area that you used, um, that you turned it from your opening. You don't need to worry about going back in and restitching that or anything. You can tuck that in with your, um, with your little twig. You can tuck it right in there with that. Now on your template, when you go to the website to print that off, I've got, like I said, I've got two different leaf patterns there for you. This is one. And if you wanted to stitch down that center, I've got the red thread on here and you'll be really able to see it. But I would just do like this, just simply come down in and I curve out a bit and then I usually stop and pivot and flip that around and you can see that this is beautiful just like that and stitch down on it again and it makes a nice vein for your leaf just like that okay and then I tuck this into the pumpkin at the top and then I go ahead and put the wood right down in there as well. And just for some security, I like to put a little bit of hot glue on there. And that usually lasts and, and holds up year after year um, for whatever you want to do. And like I said, you can decorate these as much as you would like. I also added um, a few little ribbons on there. And I thought that made cute for a display. And it looks so nice with your colors for the fall. And this one's got just a little bit of twine on that one. And you can see... So I hope you enjoyed the video today and that you had fun doing it and teach a kid how to sew because kids love this. The wedge that you've got today, you can of course shrink this pattern down some if you'd like to make smaller pumpkins and always enlarge it as well. And I found that enlarging it and reducing it the pumpkins come out just so nicely either way. If you wanted to serge this project, you would have used your serger when we gathered, of course, but when you get ready to put those wedges together, I like to do it on my sewing machine. They just turn out better. Um, so I hope you'll go and get this pattern printed off and stitch you up a pumpkin this fall. But also remember that I've got little pencil topper pumpkins on there too, and they're a great little project too to share and give away during the holidays. Thank you so much for joining us today, and don't forget, to visit www.carolinasewingback.com for your free pattern.